Good morning to everyone watching. This is my fifth shot of Ozempic that I'm going through right now. Um, so far, things have been going okay as far as my doctor is taking it slow with me. So for four weeks in a row, I did um, a quarter shot or 0.25 milligrams. Okay. After my fourth shot last week, I actually had a follow-up with him. And I was telling him, I was like, listen, you know, I, I changed how I eat kind of like, I won't say I got on a diet, but technically it is. I was like, I made sure my portion sizes were smaller because I was taking the theory of act as if, meaning act as if this drug has already shrunk my stomach, like they say it's supposed to do. So get used to smaller portion sizes, you know, and get used to not snacking on heavy, heavy stuff at all. You know, maybe grab a banana or something like that. You know, or try to eliminate it as much as possible. And I know from experience, including this last month, some days are easier than others. In fact, over this last week, um, there was two days that I actually kind of like had a, what I'll say, an old eating habit, days of eating, in a way. You know, for instance, I think when I made this video on Wednesday, I actually had like an egg sandwich for, for breakfast on a wrap and dinner. My wife had some leftover like Swedish meatballs. So I took that with some like uh, mashed potatoes that she used as a side and made that a meal. Kind of heavy. Okay. And then the next day, Thursday, we actually had a little blessing drop in our lap because both kids went to her parents and they watched him overnight. So we are, you know, my, my kids are about to be four and they're six. So having them not in the house for a night, it's a mini vacation sometimes. Love them to death, but being without them for a night is calming. So we went out to dinner. We found a place nearby actually that just, just took the location of an old restaurant and they had one of those um, almost like tap room things where it was a bunch of ales were up against a the wall. They gave you a little credit card and um, you would just scan it and pour as much as you want and they would charge you by the ounce. So we got to try that out for the night. And by the way, the food there was very fantastic. I found some um, uh, spare rib tips tacos. She ended up having some kind of burger with an au jus. And we shared some bacon wrap scallops because you cannot ignore when bacon wrap scallops are on a menu scallops in general but those specifically so that was like an indulging night too and I personally saw the weight creep back up a little bit and then I had to work my way down so it's an effort it's a new lifestyle and in order for this to work I need to absorb it in myself and make it a daily regimen I'm not going to sit there and say those days were cheat days. I'm just going to say I had a little indulgence. Now back to the program. So um, I was hoping it would be lower today than it was last week just to show good progression. So again, my audio visual team came together and have my best schematic. And here we go. 277.8, which is a half pound less than last week. So I was able to fall off the wagon and then get back on it and continue my program. So I was surprised to see that number be lower. And I'm very happy to see the number because whenever anyone has to do anything of this kind, once progress stops, motivation has a hindrance and it kind of stops too sometimes. So I'm doing my best to make sure that it does not happen. So with the dosage I was on was a quarter and I met with my doctor on last Thursday and he said, that's good. Um, you're making some progress. You're having no side effects. We can now bump it up. So today will be my first shot of actually doing 0.5 milligrams instead of the, the 0.25. <clears throat> and I asked him the question I have posed um, last week and maybe the week prior as well saying, I don't know how much of my rewards have been the drug, 
versus how much of my rewards have been me. And he kind of like just nodded his head. He goes, this is all you. He goes, at 0.25 milligrams, your body really isn't going to see an effect yet. You know, we're just doing that level because we want your body to really get used to it and understand that this is happening prior to getting you on full dose. So he goes, you could be happy in the fact that you did this yourself by just cutting your intake and being sensible. The drug will take effect later and we'll see how this goes. So, hey, that's kind of good to know in a way, saying like, oh yes, I did it, good me, but I'm kind of curious to see what this is doing, you know, for my insides in general. Now, let me do this now, get this all ready, so I have the pen all set up, it's got its click dial with the how many milligrams comes up here in the window, so, and <laughs> it's a lot of clicks even to get to the .25, There. It took that many twists and turns just to get to the 0 0.5 here in the window. <sighs> okay. Now, like I said, we got our little our little needle cap. I'll pull this jobber out here. Bada boom, bada bing. Screw the protected needle cap onto the end of the pen. Make sure that it is nice and tight. And that's getting all ready. Now my injection site actually no longer has the um, the black and blue that I experienced from two weeks ago. So everything is kind of, you know, on target to be nice and good then. Okay. Get a little uh, Purell and a nice little towelette. Clean it up. Make sure there's no dirt on the surface. Now... So the doctor was saying, like, you know, now I might feel something. You know, I wasn't nauseous before. There's a potential. It begins a little bit now. He goes, just be prepared. You know, the breakfast I have today, make sure it's a light breakfast. You know, don't put anything that could nauseously come up there. You know, so again... I'm not. I'm trying not to do bacon, egg, and cheeses or Taylor ham, egg, and cheeses now, even though they are delicious as all hell. But he goes, just, just be sensible as you're doing this, which I am. That is longer than I had before, so. I wonder what this is going to sound and look like when it gets up to like the one milligram dosage. Now, interestingly enough, and this is where I was talking to my pharmacist, this pen is a two milligram pen. Okay. And so I did my four shots of a quarter each. So that's the first milligram. And now that I'm up to a half, I'll be able to do this and next week. And then this pen is done. I have my second one already it's actually in the fridge. They chill it until it's ready. But once you take it out of the fridge, you've got like 56 days before, you know, you got any issues. So there's plenty of time to use it before it goes bad. They just tell me, though, take it out of the fridge, you know, sometime prior to using it. Because you don't want it, the fluids to be cold and therefore they will... Um, Let's say be a little bit more gelatinous and the shot might not be as effective as far as pushing the liquid into your body and giving you your injection. So probably the day before I'll take it out, let it come to room temperature, and then I'm good for the next two months. But again, it's still going to be the two milligram pen. So if I have the same four shots and I'm feeling fine, he might bump it up. To the one milligram so that'll be finishing this pen and half of that pen now i'm on one milligram so i asked her i was like hey you know miss pharmacist am i gonna have to come back every two weeks to get a new pen because it's only two milligrams i'm gonna be taking one she was oh no 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 no, no. we have larger ones 
once you start going on the one milligram dosage, there is a four milligram pen. So just like this one would have been, you know, with, with the 0.5s or would have been eight shots with the 0.25s, the four milligram pen, I can do it, you know, one pen a month. And she even said, there's an eight milligram pen. I was like, wow, that's a lot. But she goes, it's a matter of what your body will absorb. And if you hit a wall, so to speak, you know, there are people who take the one milligram for a while and then they've kind of like, don't progress. It's reached like the end of its effectiveness. They need to bump up the two. Okay. It's probably a lower population that actually gets up there, in my own opinion, which is really not based on too much, but it exists. So I shouldn't have to worry about that for a very long time if I even get to that phase. So we'll see how this happens. Oh, I'm getting dry. One second. Sorry about that. Okay. So right now, it was a half pound less than last week. So I'm probably around eight and a quarter-ish. I'll, I'll type it down below when I do my actual math later on. So that's not bad for a full month. You know, eight pounds in a month on my own effort. So, again, I'm taking the Ozempic because I hit diabetic for two months with blood tests, but then I'm back down to pre-diabetic. So I'm not really diabetic, but this will help with those levels nonetheless. And I know from past scans that the doctor was kind of curious with certain levels in my, um, my blood sheets that my liver isn't functioning fantastically. And doing the scans, they found that there's fatty deposits on the liver. Now this doctor says that this should actually help with that which would be fantastic to have an organ working 100% the way it should. So I'm looking forward to seeing probably in September is when I go back to him for another blood work and possibly scans to see if there's any progress has been made in my levels. But in the meantime, I am happy to report that as of this week, starting on Monday, I was able to get a hold of this trainer I want to use, and I did start to go see him. I have my first session on Monday afternoon, and I have another session two hours from now. So I'm I'm getting the exercise I'm going to require, and it will then be part of my weekly life that not only am I going to exercise when seeing him, he's going to give me some things to do for like homework, especially things like stretching. Stretching is something I need to do because right now I am stiff as all hell. And I know, like, in my legs, I have certain muscles that are just rock hard that need to be, you know, worked out as far as, like, that tenseness needs to be worked out. And it will actually help me with other things. In fact, some of the things I found out, the one thing happened was when I had my um, uh, meniscus surgery done on my left knee. Had the right knee done two years ago, but now it's my left knee. Um... The doctor was like, you have to do these quad exercises, you know, because you have to kind of strengthen the muscle above the knee in order to help the knee and below to get the whole thing working the way it needs to work. So I was doing that, but unfortunately I followed his, his advice a little too strictly where I went to the gym and only exercised the quad. Okay. This is a mistake. It's kind of like when you're doing your arm exercises, you do your biceps and your triceps. You even do your shoulders. You do the whole arm itself. Well, by doing the quad only to fix the knee, my IT band seized up practically because I wasn't also doing the calves and the hamstrings and all the other muscles to kind of that work along with it. So by doing that, it was a horrible thing where I had to get my cane out again to walk. So I was going to the physical therapist anyway, and I said, hey, listen, I got this problem. And they checked it out, and they started working on it and give me other exercises. But one of the things they found was the, um, what do they call this? The, uh, the adductor, that muscle on the inside of your thighs. You know, you go to the gym, there's those leg machines that 
you know, movies and whatever, you like to see the, the nice women on where they open their legs or they close their legs. It's the one that helps you, I believe, you close them. So that muscle itself is literally this solid. So I've actually been going to get massages every now and again to help them work it out because that affects the rest of the leg. I also have an issue with that leg too where, say I give my kids a bath and they're in the tub and I kneel down on a tile and I reach over to give them soaps and whatever else. Well, when I kneel on the floor, the tops of my feet are flat on the tile and they cramp up like this. It's instantaneous. And when I went to go see the masseuse for the one issue, she said, oh wait, you have that too? That's a calf issue. Your calves are too tight because your calves pull on your feet. So she's now working on my calves and she got in there like a deep tissue got in there, which is painful, but I love because I know it's for a good cause. And she's working on that. So the only reason why I even go into this whole diatribe is I know I have muscles that need to be fixed just in general with my legs due to the inactivity when I had surgeries. Now I have to go see this trainer, not only to exercise on top of everything else, which gets into the comment on my last video where someone talked about their neighbor where Ozempic and wherever drug he took just sapped his muscles and he just walked around like a zombie. I've heard that the muscles being depleted along with your weight loss is a thing. So I want to go see my trainer to help preempt that. But on top of that, I don't want to take this body, lose a bunch of weight, and then have that flappy skin thing. So I told the trainer, you know something? I don't want to have flappy man boobs. I don't want to have this, you know, excess thing around my belly. Those are the areas I want to make sure we work on. And he goes, that's perfect because we will do strength training in those areas. And that strength training might assist with tightening up the skin because the skin's kind of elastic. So it's not going to be one for one. It's not going to be the everything's going to be perfect. It's going to be required that I make the effort and then I actually do not only what I he tells me to do there, but what I take home. So that's the exercise portion of this. And those were the three things I wanted to talk about. You know, this is the first time I'm going up to a 0.5 milligram dose. The doctor saying the drugs really didn't do anything to get me where I am currently. This was all me. The drugs will kick in later on. So that was, it takes the wind out of the sails a little bit, but it's also a good thing to hear. And the third thing was going to see the trainer. So I think I am progressing fine by entering this new stage of my life. Anyone else that's going through this kind of stuff, if any of this becomes valuable information for you, I'm happy to provide it. If you have any more questions, let me know. This isn't just one of those things like, let me bump up the comments. It's just one of those, I am very responsive to people asking questions and people making their comments. So if there's something you want to know or something that you want to share with me, you're not only sharing it with me, you're sharing it with anybody else who's reading it down below. So I look forward to hearing from anybody. Thank you for listening to this. I will see you in seven days for what's going to be the rest of pen number one. All right. Enjoy the rest of your day. And for those of you who are going to celebrate, enjoy the 4th of July, which is tomorrow. Bye-bye now.